All right, so yesterday <clears throat> um, we were working on the bead cove. And so what I want to do today is I'm going to uh, do the actual cove cut rather than just the bead cut. Um, this is where things get really, really delicate on the edges uh, because they will easily mash over. So that's why this is always the last stage. And what's nice is uh, you can fill the glue, run your finger through there in order to spread it uh, on all sides and then flip it and put it uh, onto your existing uh, bead that you've got. Uh, I'll show you actually where I 3D printed uh, some holders in order to do that. Um, in the book, they talk about just taking a two by four and then just uh, run a, a groove through there so that you can just hold this and support it. But uh, the 3D prints actually kind of turned out cool. So uh, I will show that in just a bit. I've got to run a few of these uh, cove cuts. So give me a little bit of time and uh, we'll go over and glue on some more strips. All right, so holding this for gluing is a huge uh, trick. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was, instead of having a great big board in front of me, because everything's elevated, uh, I wanted it to actually use the, the ribs or the uh, molds um, in order to uh, hold something. So I quickly designed Infusion 360, uh, basically a little block, hollowed out some um, uh, channels, if you will, so that all this has to do is fit on my form and then uh, the groove, which is perpendicular, then holds my uh, my uh, slat or my piece of wood. So that <laughs> that in itself was actually kind of a, a, a an easy piece to just keep things simplistic and be able to work with it. So let's go ahead and glue this up and let's put it on. We'll go into a little time lapse. All right, each time it's always a little bit of a struggle, but um, I've got another layer on and we're starting to work a little bit of a curve. So my bungee cords, I'm still waiting for the larger ones to come uh, being shipped. I uh, haven't received them yet. So I'm using some of the old stuff that I had lying around, uh, much smaller, but it's holding things down because we don't need a lot of pressure yet. And the clamps seem to be doing okay. Uh, the other thing is I've got my hole saw ready so I can go ahead and add more holes as I go along based off of where I need them. One of the things that I'm doing different, uh, and this is one of the uh, suggestions out of the book, uh, in terms of my laminations through here, a lot of times you just bring it up to, and then you would have another one that goes over the top in order to make uh, kind of your uh, sharper edge. Um, Mac uh, stated that what he liked to do was an overlap in order to extend it out, and then you get a little bit more of a clean look to it. Uh, if you can do your saw blades nice, uh, absolutely. Uh, I've got a few little uh, glitches here and there. And as soon as I get that technique figured out, I'm sure the second one uh, canoe that I do will be much, much better. But anyways, going past uh, tends to, uh, I think, really make it look really clean. The other thing that I'm going to do, uh, because sometimes I just worry about glue holding on, uh, I'm going to take a walnut uh, quarter inch dowel and I'm going to pin several of these along the edge, noting that yes, we're going to have fiberglass uh, over it and you have to do an epoxy uh, coating on it first before you put the fiberglass on. And it should just keep the boat uh, very, very um, secure. However, for the decorative piece, as well as kind of, for me, peace of mind, I'm going to pin dowel uh, these, uh, several of them through here, and then I'll kind of back off because when I get up here, uh, I'm a little nervous about doing this, but uh, I won't be able to have that same angle in order to pin dowel it as well. So we'll continue working on this. <laughs> 